Before we start the video today, I just wanted to take a second to pay some respects to a good friend of mine and an advocate for the hobby and marine life around the world, Mr. Jake Adams. I remember getting the text message that day saying that he had passed away and I was like, there's no way this is, this, this can't be a thing. Uh, I was in shock then. Weeks later, I'm still just left without words and in shock now. I've said this before and I'll say it again, every single time I have talked to Jake, whether that be a five minute conversation or an hour and a half conversation, I always learned something. On the Reef Builders YouTube channel, he did such a great job at blending old school reef keeping with new school reef keeping and there will be a void forever in this hobby now that he has passed. He was one of the smartest people that I've ever had the privilege to chat with and I will forever hold on to every single one of those moments that we had. I do want to turn everybody's attention to this GoFundMe page that popped up after Jake's passing. Know that you will not only be helping Jake's wife Windsor, but also an incoming member of the family as she is pregnant. We do a lot of fundraisers in the radio business and I say this from the bottom of my heart. And I know that this feels a little weird when you're doing it, but if you can only donate a dollar or $5 or $10, whatever that donation could be, a thousand, 2000, whatever that is for you, make it. You are helping someone, you are helping a family get through this really, really hard time. And it does not matter what that amount is. A ripple creates a wave. We all know this, every little bit helps. That link can be found in the description below. He may be gone, but he will not be forgotten. Rest in peace, Jake Adams. All right, guys, it's a long awaited series, getting this room back in order again. Today we start phase one. We're gonna take down the Pico macro algae tank, and we're also going to set up Uno and Dos, my favorite two clownfish, their new home together. Let's go. What's up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. It is a tall order, but we're on the road to 25,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. So if you could please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Thank you for joining me on phase one of the basement reno. Uh, the end goal is to set up my brand new tank that I've had sitting over here for quite some time now. As many of you know, with a full-time job and kids and family always running everywhere around town, always activities to be had. Everything takes just a smidge longer to get switched over. For the last two years? All right, let's get started. Just over two years ago, I started this two and a half gallon Pico tank. It's been really low maintenance. I've had a pom-pom crab in it for almost its entire life. This dude has fooled me multiple times with molts. I'm like, ah, oh, I mean, this is the end of the road, huh? It's been... It's been over a year and a half. It's probably life expectancy time, but nope. They're just molts. He just, he just keeps going. So we're gonna have to transfer this pom-pom crab over to the refugium in the frag tank. We'll do that today. The only other inhabitant that I had in this tank was coral. And uh, that was in one of the first iterations of this tank's life. So I moved that out to the frag tank and now it's really just been the pom-pom crab and all of this macro algae. If you ever want to set up your own Pico tank with macro algae and cool invertebrates, make sure that when you're done with this video, go back and watch the series that I made and then you can skip all the mistakes I made with this Pico tank and just go straight for the good stuff. Step one, we're gonna take down this tank, we're gonna remove it, we're gonna take the pom-pom crab, put them in the frag tank, refugium, and then we'll get the new water box set up for Uno and Dos. It is overgrown with prolifera right now, so let's go see what we can find. Not the most aesthetically appealing tank anymore just because the Prolifera has obviously taken over. It's doing very well. The pom-pom crab is doing awesome. Uh, we do have some flatworms in here, and it looks like the Prolifera has kind of outcompeted every other macro algae that was in here to begin with. So I'll put the Prolifera in the refugium of the frag tank, and I'll also put the pom-pom crab in there as well. So let's get started. Let's take this thing down. 
A unique macro algae that you should definitely try if you're into this is Codium. It has a really neat rigid structure and it has a really awesome growth pattern. So check out Codium if you're interested in macro algae. Before we go too much further, as you can see the pom-pom crab is over here in the corner. I'm gonna see if I can snag him up and pull him out. Put him in here for now. And then we'll go ahead and uh, acclimate him to the frag tank, Joma's new home. I know that he's gonna be just fine in the frag tank fuge, but I know for a fact, I probably won't see him very much anymore due to all the hiding spots he's got now. Obviously you hate to see a tank come down, especially one like this that has been through so many different iterations, but it's just time. Really wanna get down to three total tanks and right now we're at seven. <laughs> now mind you, two of those are Uno and Dosa's separate tanks, so not much maintenance there, but really think this area is gonna look better with that 10 gallon water box on top of it. So as I'm pulling all this apart, I did notice that uh, the clear coat that I used on these uh, pipes didn't really take on the feet very well. You can see the rust, especially on this one. So if you end up buying any of these pipes for stands or anything like that, just make sure you clear coat them, coat them with something protective because the second these things see any kind of salt water, rust city. So if you're making your own stand, just make sure you protect it. All right, now that we've taken that down, we've moved the pom-pom crab from his digs in the Pico tank to a much larger refugium, which basically means I'll never see him again. Let's go ahead and move the 10 gallon water box into place. This video is not sponsored by Waterbox. I actually purchased this, if you can believe it, I purchased it from the Marine Depot sell-off. Essentially, they were getting rid of all of the stuff on the website. I think I got this tank for $100 or something like that. And I knew that a 10-gallon all-in-one would come in handy someday. And here we are, the new home for Uno and Dos. They actually give you a lot of stuff with, like you get a filter sock, which I guarantee will be clogged in the first couple days. Filter media, sponge, straight carbon. Bio balls looks like. If you don't know about Uno and Dos, uh, a while back I tried my hand at breeding clownfish, which by the way, uh, Zach and Kelly, my Da Vinci clowns still spawn every two weeks. I just have not taken the initiative to raise any more at this time, but that will continue in the future at some point. But Uno and Dos are my first two baby fry that I was able to raise up and they're actually pretty big now. So I'm excited to pair them up in this brand new water box and see how they do. I'm gonna add some Fritz Turbo Start to help get this thing kick-started. I'm also going to pull a rock or two from the Nano Macro Algae Tank, the one that I made for Bulk Reef Supply back in the day. And I'm gonna use that rock to help seed as well. And what's nice about that rock is that there aren't any pests that I've seen in this tank. That doesn't mean they don't exist. That doesn't mean they won't pop up whenever I put this in the new tank, but it's the cleanest rock that I, that I have right now. And I know that this rock is gonna be good because it's been in this tank for about a year as well. So now the new, new tank, the tank that'll be going in behind me, we're gonna be starting that from scratch. So dry rock, new water, all of it. I don't want any contamination as much as possible in that tank. So I'm gonna let the water box sit for a couple weeks and then in the next video that we do down here, phase two, we will introduce Uno and Dos to the brand new home that they've got and uh, see how well they do. And I'm not opposed to putting a NEM in there at some point or just throwing some basic corals in there. I mean, I'm a reefer at heart, so you know that there's probably gonna end up being a bunch of coral that go in that tank. But for now, it's just a place for Uno and Dos. On to phase two. Along with whatever else is going on down here, as I update you on the tank moves and breaking down tanks and all that kind of stuff, uh, I do also wanna spike in some tour videos. So we will go see Tyler, Inland underscore Reefs Tanks. He has some awesome stuff as per usual and a lot has changed since I was at his place last. Also, Lauren from Simple Aquariums will do 10 questions with. It's a new kind of video series that I wanna spike in as well. I wanna give you a really cool update on the Weeping Willow Leather Coral. I get asked about it almost daily still, and everybody who has a piece of the Weeping Willow that I've given to over the years also gets hit up on a daily basis. And a new reveal of a 
toadstool that I've had for quite some time. It's been cooking and it is pretty awesome. So you can follow along on the journey, of course, by liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Obviously my favorite jumpstart bacteria, Fritz Turbo Start. I've used their salt for years. It mixes well. It runs about eight DKH, which is great because I don't have to dose it. That's what I keep it all my tanks at. You want to make sure that whatever salt you use, your local fish store carries. If you have a local fish store, because in case of an emergency, you're able to just pop on over, get some of that salt and bring it back. Also got to give a shout out to my guy, Scott Crow, Toasty. who I miss on the daily. If you didn't know this, he's running for fish governor of Rhode Island. He also runs a pretty successful chain of fish stores in the Rhode Island area. It's called Ocean State Aquatics. You can find OSA on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. They're everywhere, always doing something really, really cool. As I've been preparing for each one of these phases when it comes to these videos, it's funny because boxes are starting to arrive. Uh, I did get an aquascape from Kevin Berta over at Top Shelf Aquatics, so I can't wait to reveal that to you for the new tank. I'm very excited about it. Thank you, Kevin, for that. Also, I've got this, the uh, GHL Proflux. <laughs> it's going on the new tank, baby. What up? Excited for uh, the installation of the new tank as well. That's a little bit down the road. Uh, make sure you stick with me. Thank you for joining me on today's video. I really appreciate the support as usual. Uh, this fragrance of chili has kind of entered the air. And I'm not talking about the aftermath of the chili. I'm talking about the before. So I'm going to go eat that. Okay, bye.